Hello, this is Sue Reynolds, President of the American Student Achievement Institute, home of Redesigning School Counseling. This video is on RSC for districts. It's intended for school districts with multiple RSC schools. As a reminder, this is the fourth in a four-part video series. The other three videos were on um, doing an overview of the Lilly School Counseling Initiative. The second video was on writing your planning grant. The third video was RSC for schools. And now this video is RSC for districts. The purpose of this series is to help Indiana public school districts understand how RSC can be used during the planning phase in the, in the Lilly School Counseling Initiative. And all four videos are available at www.asainstitute.org slash lilly. So let's begin with a quick review. Um, in video two, which was on writing your planning grant, one of the things that we just wanted to touch on is that there are some pre-planning grant writing questions that we think that districts will need to look at. One is the two of the questions were around the planning process. And with the first question be, being, will the planning discussions occur at the district level or the school level? And we'd like to recommend the school level. This will come up later in this video as well. But we really think that the planning discussions need to happen at the school level. And if you are going to be um, having the, the planning discussions at the school level, will all schools in the district be using the same planning process? And our recommendation is that all are the same. In the last video, we talked about the pros and cons of having each um, school using the same planning process. Um, but our overall recommendation is that it, we think it works better when all schools are using the same terminology, the same uh, timeline, um, the same process. It just works really well when all schools in the district are kind of on the same page. So this video is going to help you consider as a district how you might monitor and coordinate the efforts if multiple schools in your district were using RSC. Then in video three, we talked about the specifics of RSC for schools. And if you've not watched that video, I'd really recommend as a district person that um, you go back and, and look at that video so you can see how RSC is implemented at the, at the building level. But basically, um, one of the things we pointed out in that video was that um, we have in RSC what we call the School Counseling Impact Pyramid. And basically what we're saying is that we believe that when students are involved in sound guidance and counseling programs, they tend to make better choices at school, and as a result of that, achievement goes up. And we actually have independent research now that shows that the RSC model does make an impact on academic achievement. In the planning phase, we'll just be working this pyramid backwards in the schools. So in schools, we'll start out by saying, okay, what are the achievement goals in your school improvement plan? And then we'll ask, what choices do all students need to make in order for the school to reach those achievement goals? And then once we know what those choices are, so there may be choices like the kids will choose to turn in their homework or ask questions in class when they're confused or not punch somebody in the nose when they're angry. Um, so when we know what the choices are that we want students to make, then we'll design guidance activities and counseling activities so that um, students will make the choices that we want them to make. We also pointed out in the last video that RSC is a proven process. And just a couple things to point out. We have a lot of testimony from folks uh, saying that RSC is a um, is uh, a process that is, is worthwhile. Um, this report that was published by um, the Indiana State Chamber of Commerce Foundation said that one of the brightest spots on the Indiana School Counseling landscape is the Gold Star School Counseling Program, which is RSC provides all the training for Gold Star, uh, which continues to expand across the state. And then they went on to say the RSC program provides a consistent and comprehensive process for schools to examine, organize, and redesign their school counseling efforts based on student goals and outcomes. So a lot of testimony from folks that have either used RSC or have studied RSC 
um, really saying that RSC is a good process for designing comprehensive school counseling programs. We also know that our professional development model works. Um, Indiana has more uh, schools than any other state by far who have earned the National Ask a Ramp Award. And all of Indiana's awardees used RSC to design their award-winning model. If our professional development model did not work, um, we wouldn't be seeing 129 ramp schools in Indiana when most schools have less, most states have less than 10 of those, those awardees. And then finally, this is the data that's really important to us. We as school counselors want to make sure that the school counseling programs that we design have an impact on student achievement. This study was published um, in the Ask a Counselor. Um, it was independent research that was conducted by the Universities of Connecticut and Scranton. And that research showed that RS, schools that have been through RSC had significantly higher scores on state math and language arts tests. Um, and this really is what we're after. All those nice things that people said about RSC, the, the fact that our schools get awards, I mean, that's all nice. But what we really want to know is did the program make a difference in the academic achievement of students? So given that we have independent uh, research that shows that, we think that RSC is definitely a model process for designing a comprehensive school counseling program. So another thing we wanted to point out and that we talked about in the third video was that RSC is not about replicating a model program. We believe that there is no one-size-fits-all model that every school can implement uh, and get the same results. A school counseling program that worked in Houston may not work in Indianapolis, may not work in, in Paoli. So we think it's really pro important that while we study other successful programs to see what they have in common, that we're not just replicating some other school's model program. Instead, RSC is a discovery process where we help schools discover the program that's going to work best with their students based on their students' needs and in their community. So RSC is a discovery process. It's a planning process, which is nice because Lily has now given us um, in the schools in Indiana uh, a semester with some funding to, to participate in a planning process and a discovery process. So during this planning process that will happen um, second semester of this school year, um, the, here are some of the questions that we help schools um, look at. One is, what are the choices that successful students make? And then what percentage of our students are making those choices? And so we'll pull in data at that point to help schools understand that. And then three, why, kid, why aren't kids making those choices? You know, we, number two, the data there would show us that kids aren't making them, and now we want to explain why students aren't making those choices. And so in three, we go down to root cause data, um, so we can help to determine if they're not making those choices because they're lacking information, they're lacking opportunities, or maybe they have social emotional concerns that are getting in the way of them making all, all choices. Then four, we'll look at, well, what's the best way to provide the information or the opportunities that all students need? And then what's the best way to provide social emotional support that some students need? So the whole thing is a data-driven process. We're using data at two points. One is to help us determine the percentage of students that are making choices. And then the, the other level is to help us understand why kids aren't making those choices. I might mention, too, that all of our data is disaggregated, so we not only know um, what, what choices kids aren't making, but we know are there certain groups of students that are making those choices at an even lesser rate than, than their peers. So we disaggregate the data by different student groups, by all the, the federal student groups as well as a few others. Okay, so when we're working with the schools, with your schools, um, in the second semester, here's how we do that. In January, we'll talk with them about getting organized and collecting data. In February, we'll help them set goals. In March, we'll help them identify their root causes. 
in April will help them identify activities and also determine what delivery framework they're going to use. If it's going to be just delivery by school counselors or if we're going to engage others in, in the delivery of the school counseling program. And then in May, we'll help the schools communicate with the district because we know that you need information for the school, from the schools before you write your, your implementation grant that's due to Lilly in May. So um, in May, the schools will um, send you information about their goals and their activities and how much funding they're going to need within your constraints um, to, support, um, to, to support those activities. So that's kind of the, the, the planning process that we do with the schools in a, in a nutshell. Okay, so now let's look at the district. As we started looking at districts who have a lot of schools participating in RSC, and we have many districts where every school in the district is, is uh, participating in RSC, um, one of the things we want to make sure that the district has, has discussed is, especially with this grant, is will these discussions in the planning process take place at the building level or the district level? We've heard from a lot of districts that they're planning on having these discussions at the district level. Um, we think they're doing that because it's easier to just have one discussion at the, at the district level. But we know that it's much more powerful, um, it's much more productive and effective to have these discussions within each building. So we're going to suggest to you that you ask each of your schools that are participating in RSC to have these discussions and to go through the process at the building level. That means each school would have their own school counseling um, council. Each school would end up with their own goals, their own um, root causes, and their own activities. The reason we think that's so important is because the students are different in every school. And so we want each individual school to look at their individual school's student data so that they can make the best decisions for the students in their building. The other thing is that the politics are a little different in every school. And as we're designing this new uh, school counseling initiative, it's logical that we're going to hit resistance along the way at some point. That, that always happens. And so we want to be able to work with each individual school because each individual school is going to have slightly different resistance and we want to be able to predict the resistance and head it off um, before it happens and, and also listen to the resistance in each building because sometimes the resistance is, is, is accurate, it's correct and we've gone down a road that we need to tweak a little bit. So, so that's why we're really focused on planning at the, at the school level. What we realized is that as a district person, if you have four or 13 or 50 different schools, that means you're going to have 50 sets of goals, 50 sets of root causes, 50 set of, sets of activities. And we can see why that might feel overwhelming to a district. So our staff started to think about, well, how, what can we do to help this be manageable at the district level if we're allowing the discussions and the planning to happen at each of the building levels? So here's what we've come up with. One of the things that we looked at is how can we help districts monitor the RSC efforts in their schools so you can kind of keep tabs on, on, on what's happening. So we have, we'll have all the school's data in our system, and what we'll do is create a report like this. It's the planning progress report, where you'll be able to open this report as a district person. It'll give you each of the products that uh, occur at the end of each of the discussions, the due date, and then this X means that that school submitted to it. It submitted it to us. We checked it against our rubric for, um, for program design, and everything seemed okay, and we, we checked off they're fine. So as you're looking at this, um, you can kind of see if it were um, uh, mid-March and you're looking at this, you're saying, you know, oh, most of the schools are right where they need to be. Got a couple schools that have really kind of worked right on time, and even though this isn't due until March 30th, they've already got it turned in and, and uh, approved by ASA. But here's Brown Elementary School. And you can see they're more than a month behind. 
this would be of concern to us. And um, even if you didn't notice this as a district, if you're involved with us in, in RSC district, we would be calling you and saying, we're concerned about Brown. Um, they're, they're kind of running behind. We've offered them our help, and we will call Brown and make sure that, you know, there's not something we can do to help them get, get caught up. Um, and, and, but we'll ask you to help us with that as well. So, so we'll be monitoring, but this report will give you a chance to monitor as well. And by the way, there are, there are good reasons that schools get behind. There might have had eight snow days all in one month. And so what we do then is we, we set a, an individualized timeline for that school to make sure that they can finish their work and get caught up with everyone else. So, okay. So that's that. Then another question we asked is, how can we help districts coordinate RSC efforts uh, in their schools? So as a district person, you know, we think there are times when you're going to want to coordinate. So here's another report that we can produce. Um, in this case, this is a crosswalk between um, priority goals that the schools have set and then the schools. So basically we're saying, okay, turn in homework. Uh, three schools have identified that as a priority goal, Jones, North, and South. Create a four-year course plan, one school, Smith, Element, Smith Middle School. And so as a district person, as you read through this, there may be things that jump out at you. Like if I'm reading through this, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, we've got four-year course plans being developed at, at um, Smith, but not at Jones Middle School. And so that may be something as a district person, I'm thinking, you know, we really need every single one of our eighth graders to develop a four-year high school course plan, not just the kids at Smith. And so I might be on the phone with Jones to say, you know, I noticed this wasn't a priority goal for you. Can we talk about that? And Jones may say that's because all of our kids already have that. We, we didn't, it didn't need to be a priority goal. They might also say um, that this is a place where, oops, we just kind of messed up here. And yes, we absolutely um, want our kids to have a four-year course plan. So, um, so that's something you can look at. Um, another way you can help coordinate is, um, here's another example. We've got um, South having a uh, college fair as a priority goal. And we've got um, North having a college fair as a priority goal. So as a district person, I might just send them both an email and say, oh my gosh, you guys are both working on the same goal. Maybe you want to join forces here, have one district-wise college fair, and, um, and, and you know, we can save ourselves some time and effort by, by working together on that. Um, so we can coordinate that way. Um, and then another thing that we could do is we could say, you know, why don't we just put on a college fair at the district level? We'll take that off your plates, and then you guys can spend time hitting some other different priority goals. So lots of different ways that you could look at coordinating activities once you know what the, um, what the goals are uh, for each of, your, each of your schools. Okay, another question we asked ourselves is how can we help districts write one implementation grant proposal for Lilly that includes all of the school's activities and funding needs? So, and we think this is, you know, going to be challenging that, that as a district person, you've got to write one implementation plan that encompasses the needs of many schools when each of the schools has different needs and is, is likely to go different directions depending on their, their students. Um, so, um, this is one report that we'll provide. This is an activity, activity report where we've said, okay, district across the district, for priority goal, take an AP or do a credit course. Here are the activities that are happening. Smith Middle School is going to do an AP summit and a high school course plan workshop where they talk about AP. North High School is going to have an AP potential luncheon and an AP targeted email. So, um, so you know, for each school that has identified this as a priority goal, we can just list that school's activities and a little summary of each. Um, so, we'll, we, again, the computer can do all this because we have all that information in the computer, so we'll just, the computer will spit out this report for you. Okay, and then how can we help districts, um, another question we asked ourselves was how can we help districts review district-level data for program design and evaluation purposes. Well, first of all, we'll, we will aggregate all of the school's data at the district level for you. 
So you'll be able to go in and see from our student survey questions like this. Have you taken or do ha, or have you taken or do you plan to take an AP course in high school? And then you can see that this was answered by students in grades 9 through 12. And um, we've disaggregated this data by free and reduced and paid lunch. And we see that of the 502 free and reduced lunch kids, 37% said they plan to take or have taken AP, while 67 of the paid percent of the paid lunch students say, said that. This is data from a real school, by the way. Um, and so, you know, we can see there's kind of a big discrepancy here. And that may lead us as a district to say to everybody, we want all schools, this is a mandate coming down from district, that all schools are going to include increasing the percentage of free and reduced lunch students who plan to take or have taken an AP class. So another thing that the district can do is look at district level data and if they think it's important enough to mandate that all schools drop that into their plans as a priority goal, they can just ask the schools to do that while they're, while they're creating their plans. So, okay, so this is kind of what, a, um, what the data report would look like once we've aggregated all of the data. Um, and then also, the, the report that you just looked at gave you a, um, a lunch program status uh, drill down but we also can drill down by school for you. So back on this, this last one, if you wanted to see, you know, this has got the desegregation by, by lunch program status, but we could also have the names of, you know, all the schools across here, and we can show you for each school what percentage um, answered those questions that way. So a school drill down report, grade level drill down report at the, when, data aggregated for the district, but then drilled down by grade level, uh, gender, race, ethnicity, lunch program status. This really, this data helps us um, identify uh, guidance gaps across the district. Um, you can also create a student group. So in your district, if you're working on achievement of your African American third grade boys, um, we can um, create that as a student group and see how they answer the survey questions. And then finally, there's a student list generator here where the districts, um, the public cannot do this. Anything that's yellow has a yellow icon, the, the public cannot look at. But the districts can create a list of students who answered the questions in a specific way. So we can tell the computer, give me a list of students who get A's and B's in the report cards, are planning to go to college, but are not planning to take an AP class. And then we can get email addresses for those kids so that we can send out that targeted email. So, okay, so that's just a little bit about the student data that we can provide for you to help with your district thinking and district discussions. Okay, then we also started thinking about down the road, we anticipate that districts will be asked to turn in data um, that show if your initiatives made a difference or not, if you receive the, um, the implementation grant. So we can very easily aggregate the data for your goals, um, as we said earlier. But here's just an example of another report. Let's say that we're looking at the goal of um, students choosing to turn in their homework. And in the district, we had two of the district schools identify that as a priority goal. Within those two schools, there were just over a thousand students um, that, that attend those two schools. And then we have baseline data, and we will have that baseline data in January 2017. So we know what percentage of the kids say that they turn in their homework on a regular basis. Um, and this data, because you have it in January, you'll be able to include that data as baseline in your implementation grant, um, which I think will be nice. Um, and then later, you know, a year later, two years later, all through the implementation phase, the four-year implementation phase, we'll be um, um, uh, pulling up uh, additional data, follow-up data, so you'll be able to know if the activities that are being implemented in the schools across your district are having an impact um, on, on, those, on those targeted priority goals. Okay, so that's another report that we'll provide. And then the next question was, well, how do we keep districts in the loop? 
Um, how do we communicate with you so you, you know what the schools are doing? How do we pull you in before schools get to a step? So if you want to ask the schools to do something related to that step, you can. And this is what we came up with. We've done this in a lot of our other initiatives, and it works really well. So what we would do, what we will do, is have monthly webinars with a district-level person or a district-level team. And just as an example, in February, the district-level webinar would be on goals. It would happen one week before we met with the schools. And during that webinar, we would introduce, you know, we'd say to you, the schools are about to do goals. Here's the terminology. We'd show you the online system and what we're asking them to do. And then we'd say, okay, before the schools get to that point next week, let's do a real quick review of the district level data. And then we need you to decide now, do you want to mandate any district-wide goals? And if you do, then we'll communicate those to the school. You'll communicate those to the school before they, they get, right as they get to the step. Or do you want to point out anything interesting? So you're not going to mandate but you notice something that's interesting in the data for middle school kids, and so you want to quickly send out an email to your middle schools um, to ask them to make sure that they look at this one data point when they're looking through their school data. And then we'll also talk about in that February webinar, we'll just give you a heads up, after the schools have entered their goals, then we'd like you to look at their goals and see are there any significant gaps that you're seeing are there places where the schools can be joining forces and other places where you can help? So, um, so this, these are kind of things that, that our staff does as well, but we think having your eyeballs on that data and having you part, be part of this discussion would really enrich the whole process as well, especially with the communication between the, the district and the schools. So, okay, so that's kind of how that would work. Now, let's just now look at the big pictures. So this is the district logistics. First of all, the organizational structure, um, if you decide to become an RSC district school, we'd want to work with one person representing the district or a small team. And it would be nice if that person were also the person that was going to be in charge of writing the district's implementation grant next May. Then um, the, I talked about these district leadership webinars and what we would discuss during those webinars. So those will happen uh, once each, each month, um, ending in June 2017, beginning in January 2017. We'd provide for your district an admin system where you could view the data, monitor school progress. The other thing where you can do there is um, add up to 20 survey questions that are district specific. They'll only appear on your, your district school's uh, surveys. Um, there's also a tool where you can send emails out directly to all the uh, council members in the community for all the schools. Um, and um, you can also send emails directly to students um, who have answered questions on the, on the survey in specific ways. Um, and we are FERPA compliant with that and can show you our attorneys, uh, uh, a letter from our attorney explaining that. Um, and then um, the other thing in the district system is obtaining summary reports that will help you with the intervention with the implementation grant writing. So, um, so these are in the district admin system. The other thing in terms of the services we'll provide that if a school does start to in, in disengage, uh, we'll let you know. And, um, and then unlimited um, on-call support so that you can call us um, anytime you have a question. Here's the timeline. Um, so on this chart, the green columns, these are schools that we've already started working with. They have already completed these things that are um, checked. So if you have any schools that are working with us right now, this is where they are um, in the process, and they will be finished by, by May. Um, then any other schools can begin working with us in January, and we're signing up schools for that January cohort right now. So if they've been in RSC before, they could become a renewal school. If they've not, then they would be a first-year school. And here's all of the, the times and, um, and dates of their webinars. And then the last column is the time and dates for the district webinars. And you can see that they, um, they fall um, about a week prior to um, the, the school webinars. So, okay. The enrollment fee. 
So this is a sliding fee scale. Um, and what we were trying to do is we didn't want to use up all of your funds because we think some of the funds need to be available for the schools to use during the planning process. So if a district had very few schools, like let's say there's a district that has only two schools, they're going to get a $30,000 planning grant. And if that money all got divided and all got sent down to the schools, that'd be $15,000 per school. So um, in that kind of district where there's very few schools involved, um, we think that, um, um, that th there will be ample funds to, to support all of our costs. Um, in districts that have a lot of schools, like if there are 50 schools in a district, and you know you get that fifty thousand, but you know then you're dividing fifty thousand by fifty, you know fifty schools. If it all gets gets um, given to the schools and none of the funding stays at the district level, but that you know that that doesn't leave you a lot of money for to put back into the schools. So we've really reduced our our funds in in that case. So um, so that's the fly, sliding fee scale. That's the rationale behind it. We really just wanted to make sure that um, we were leaving a lot of money left in the districts when possible so that you could provide that funding to the, to the schools. So, so the district fee would be $550 per participating schools. And, and again, I guess I didn't mention this, but your, your district does not have to participate. Your schools can participate without any district coordination. Um, that we've, we've, you know, we do that all the time. It works really well. We just like it better when districts are involved because then we have really good communications up and down. Um, okay, so it's 550 per participating school plus this amount that's in the that's in the chart. Okay, so then thinking ahead about what expenses will your schools have during the planning phase. So as you're thinking about how to spend your grant funds. Um, you know, some of it's going to go to pay for your technical assistance that you're getting from ASA. But then we also think some of those funds need to go to the schools um, to help them uh, pay for the expenses that they'll incur during the planning phase. So here's what we're suggesting. And, and this is just suggested. Um, we've done RSC, you know, forever with absolutely no funding in the schools. And, and, and it works. But now that we have funding, we want to think about how to spend it wisely. So we would recommend that if you can, if you've got the funds, that um, that $900 be provided for travel for each school, so that they can do site visits when they're doing their model school research. That if the schools are not able to print in-house for this, that um, there would be $50, $50 per school for printing for their council meetings. Then um, for their meetings, we're suggesting $600 per school. That would provide um, uh, that would enable the school to provide a meal during the meetings. Um, there's three meetings, and and with an inexpensive meal for 600, we feel like they'd be able to, to cover uh, those three meetings. Um, we like to serve meals in our meetings when it's possible because the discussions usually we set it up so it's a two-hour meeting. Sometimes even the, the schools will go longer because it takes that long to introduce concepts, give people the time to look at data, and then really get into a deep discussion. These are not fluff discussions. We're really digging in. So we like to kind of introduce things before lunch, before dinner, um, then take a break when people socialize and, and chat a little bit, and then come right back in and dig in and have those tough discussions. Um, so that, that, that meeting uh, cost, we, if we can tease out uh, catering or, or having the meeting in a restaurant or whatever, um, that's really, really helpful. And then conferences, there, um, we think it would be nice for uh, the counselors to be able to go to a conference to search for model school counseling programs. Um, there is a conference uh, in March. Uh, that is the evidence-based school counseling conference in San Diego that we think would be really worthwhile to send a representative to uh, so they could explore model programs. Um, and then the technical support, the 550 per school. 
So, okay, and then in, in case you don't have enough money to cover all these things, here's how we would prioritize them. The technical support we think is, is, is really important, um, so we'd put that first. Printing, the, you know, there will be some handouts that are going to be important to the discussions, so we really can't leave that out. Um, travel to do site visits, the meals at the, the meetings, and then finally the conference. We'd put them in that order. So, and again, this is just suggested and, you know, we've, we've been able to create those 200, 120 plus ramp schools with absolutely no funding. So it will work without any additional funding, but if we do have funding from the grant, this would be really, really nice. I know that the schools would appreciate it and I think it would really enrich the process. So, okay. So, and then you might be wondering um, what the association is between RSC and Gold Star. Um, You'll see all the time RSC slash Gold Star, Gold Star slash RSC. And basically, Gold Star is an award that's presented by the Indiana Department of Education for schools that have a model school counseling program um, that's data-driven, that's accountable, um, that, that addresses all the, the, the components of a model school counseling program. So the award is sponsored by the Department of Ed. Schools use our process to create the program that then is awarded, is, is reviewed for this re award. So Gold Star is an award from DOE. RSC is ASA's process that helps schools earn the Gold Star School Counseling Award. Okay, and then same thing with RAMP. RAMP, the recognized ASCA Model Program Award, is a national award. Um, it's, it's presented by the American School Counselor Association, and again, schools use our process to put all the pieces in place to have a model program that will be awarded the Ask a Ramp Award. So, okay. So, if your school is interested, if your schools are interested in either one of those awards, this is how that's going to work. So, I mentioned already all of these, um, uh, all of these tasks that we're doing each month and that we'd finish up and be ready with activities in a, um, in a uh, request for funding that the schools will give to you in May. Then if they want to do Gold Star Ramp, they would just come back for one more month with us. We do another webinar and give them another little set of tasks um, that they need to do in order to meet all of the criteria for Gold Star and Ramp. Um, for example, Gold Star requires schools to have a school counseling brochure. We don't need that for, for the ASCA, I'm sorry, we don't need that for the Lilly um, uh, application, but we do need it for Gold Star Ramp. So we'll just do those little kind of extra things in June so that your schools have met all the requirements for Gold Star and Ramp. The schools don't have to become Gold Star and Ramp. They may decide to, that they're just interested in applying for the Lilly funding and they'll finish up the work in May and that will be it. But if they do want Gold Star and Ramp, then we'll meet with them one more month. Okay, so how do we enroll our district in RSC? You would go to asainstitute.org slash lily. And um, let me show you that real quickly. Oops. So I'm just going to go to asainstitute.org slash lily. And this page will come up and I'm going to look at services in the planning phase. I'm going to hit and look for RSC district. And this page may look a little different. We're thinking about making a few little changes on here, but you're looking for RSC district. Click Enroll. And then the first thing you'll do, oops, first thing you'll do is start to type your school, your school district's name in here. I live in Monroe County, so I'm just going to go ahead and Click that one, and as soon as you do that, the computer is saying to you that there are 21 schools in your district, and here's the number of students that are in your district, and this is from DOE's enrollments forms. And then you'll tell us in 2017 how many students or how many schools will be participating in, in RSC. So let's say you're going to say, I don't know, let's say 21. And then... Um, I'm, to make this simpler, I'm just going to say two, but I hope it's 21. Um, I'm just going to say two, and then I'm going to check 
the, the two that are going to participate. And you'll see here that the number of schools indicated as enrolling does not match the number of schools checked. But when I've checked two schools, then that will go away. Uh, when those numbers match, then it will give me my, my enrollment fee. This is the 550 per school plus the, uh, plus the district fee. And then um, some other questions here, but I also wanted to show you in the memorandum of understanding, this is um, all of our deliverables. So these are the things that we promise that we'll provide for you. And then the district agreement. Um, these are the things that you're promising that you'll do. Um, and again, we, we take both of these things pretty seriously. If we don't deliver, then we've wasted your time um, and, if you, and, and funding. And if you don't deliver, then you've wasted our time. So, um, and there's the whole sliding fee scale again. And then you just hit submit, that's it. When you hit submit, um, we will, um, you'll get a confirmation email, and then your schools have to apply also. So the schools would go into the um, RSC school, they'd open up that enrollment form, and then fill out the school enrollment. And we'll kind of keep tabs to make sure that all of your schools have enrolled. When your school's enrolled, um, they will immediately get um, some language that we suggest um, goes into the, um, the, um, the application for the planning grant. And we'll, that will also be sent to the districts when the districts enroll. So we'll give you some language to put that we suggest should go into the planning grant that will describe the activities that your schools will be doing with us during the, um, during the second semester. And you'll get that then as soon as you enroll, you'll get that email that has that suggested language in it. So, okay, um, I think that's it. Let me go back to um, here. Okay, um, so yeah, that's we're wrapping up here. So this is concluding this webinar. If you have not watched RSC for Schools, I'd go back and look at that um, just as a district so you're really sure of what the schools are doing and then how the district will kind of coordinate all of that. So if you have any questions about the Lilly um, School Counseling Initiative, please direct those question, questions to Lilly. And you can send those to education at lei.org. And if you have any questions about RSC or um, about how to use RSC during Lilly's planning phase, please direct those questions to us. You can send them to ASA at asainstitute.org or just call us 812-349-4142. And we'd be happy to talk with you. So any questions or if you just want to bounce an idea off of us or or whatever, we're, we're here to help. We, we love doing this work. This is really a passion for us. Um, so good. Thank you. Appreciate your watching this video. And uh, again, please contact us if you have any questions.